again and welcome to Pringle Politics. I weren't expecting to do this video on Alex Chalk, uh, but after watching the question time over again, I was just, yes, let's just do a video with all these replies and everyone can see that he will just talk nonsense for the whole time. I think he had more more airtime than everyone else on the pa on the panel. Okay, Tories are in government, but most of it was just because he was extending his nonsense way beyond the nonsense needed to be extended. <sighs> yeah, really, really exhausting. What listening to this guy? Just hoping that he will, uh, as they say, uh, you know, there's the hope that will kill you. It's the hope that gets you. I was hoping for something got and got got him. Anyway, I would say enjoy, but that isn't the right word. You you, you want to look away, but these are the people that are running the country. You cannot take your eyes off of it because. That's what they want us to do, is just to, you know, take our eye off the ball and let them continue doing the madness, the craziness, just, you know, ripping the country apart. So you have to watch it. We have to watch it. We have to be aware of what they're saying, what madness that they're coming out with and uh, how much they can gaslight people and get away with it. We just have to keep watching so you know enjoy on tonight's panel from the government alex chalk who's currently minister of state of the mod he gave up his career in the law when he was elected mp for cheltenham in 2015 prior to his current government job in defense he worked in education and justice so Alex Navreen is a junior doctor, is using the word crisis. The Prime Minister conspicuously is not using the word crisis. Yeah. Is he wrong to do so? Well, I think that the Prime Minister is absolutely clear, and he's said this, that the NHS is under extreme pressure, and he's not uh, balked about that at all. But why and, would and he, the, why, the word but, crisis yeah. is, he's, 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 many people have asked him, to try and get him set, he's not sure. saying. Is that because he doesn't think it is? No, look, I think he recognises this is immensely serious. And certainly, when he did his um, speech recently at the beginning of the year, he named getting down the, uh, the waiting list as one of his absolute priorities. And of course, last weekend, as you know, he was there uh, meeting with the NHS. I, it, the pressures are absolutely extraordinary. I think we, or we know that. But what he's been absolutely clear about as one of his targets, he wants to get the waiting list down to, they were at two years, not least because of the backlog from COVID, get them under two years to 18 months maximum by this spring and then by next spring down to 12 months and what he said and I think this is really refreshing is he said look here I stand this is the target this is what I want to be judged on and if I don't you please do judge me and I think that's absolutely the right approach so he's been clear yes this is an intense issue but he's got a plan to New deal with it coming in if the current nurses and doctors are leaving and okay. we have the lowest number of doctors per thousand in the population for OECD countries so there is just a problem that they're just not addressing properly. Well, certainly demand is uh, colossal, and it's not just because of the pandemic, although the pandemic did have a very significant impact, not least because people weren't being referred, people got sicker because elective care didn't happen, which is why he wants to continue with elective care. But on the specific capacity, since 2010, there are 34,000 more doctors and 44,000 more nurses. Now, I absolutely accept that we need to go further, and he is uh, going further. And indeed, you know, I think over the, since 2019, I think there have been an additional 4,000 doctors, and there are 72 thousand nurses and midwives currently being trained but what we have got to do is to ensure that we don't make as it were don't make the mistakes of simply saying right we're just going to focus on urgent and emergency care we've got to get through that elective care because if we don't those people will become sicker and that's what you know last things that i know you know you say it's not all about money but even at a time like this when finances are stretched he found an additional 14 billion pounds to ensure that the nhs has got really uh, you know, resources going into the coming into the coming years i just want to give you one last chance alex do you want to admit the nhs is in crisis 
Well, look, if the Prime Minister look, doesn't, do you, hearing this, do you is, want to? There is no doubt that the pressures are no, no. at and historic levels. No, 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 the, the, the reason why I say, I say that is because you know, talk is cheap, action is what matters. And no, what no, the I'm, Prime I'm not asking said, what you're asking. No, you, you've made sure, clear sure. already about yeah. the, the money. Yes, or not? yes well, that's look, what I'm asking you. It's incredibly you. intense, and the pressures okay, are Okay, so you don't want to use that word. I think we've got that. You clearly don't want to use that word. No, but it's the actions that matter. Now, why should any of them accept that? That's, that's not that's not right. Unless look, you're giving them a, a, a pay rise which keeps up with inflation, they are getting poorer. So, so look, the, the, the position is, the way it's worked, and by the way, not just under the Conservative government but under previous governments, <coughs> is that these decisions, you try to take the politics out of it, because there is a lot of politics in this, of course, so that the pay review bodies have a look at it. And just, just to put that in some kind of context, in a previous dispute in the 1980s, it was actually the nursing union at that stage which called for this to be done by the pay review body. And I mean, I'm just, sorry, just, if you're just, going just, back can, to can the 1980s, it's such no, a no. weird argument. We're, talk, we're talking just, about what's going just, on in 2023. The fact is, is that you've got nurses using food no, banks, doctors moving to Australia where the pay is better, and that's can, because you, your but pay can I, isn't but competitive. Can I just, but can I just explain how it works? Only because when I was the prisons minister, I, I actually made representations <coughs> to the pay review body. So you have people who are highly expert people, qualified. Sometimes they might have a trade union background. Sometimes they might have other area of expertise. Expertise. The government and the minister will give evidence about what is affordable. They can take expert evidence from elsewhere, and they will then reach a decision. And by the way, I just but the, the review body is point, making point, decisions based point. on what funding you allocate. I'm sorry, this, this is such a on, ridiculous very, very, very way of you to try and can I just quickly this is a phony argument. No, but I haven't made it yet. Can I just quickly finish that? Can I just finish the line? I just want to finish the line. All right, go on. Let it slip. Yeah, a word and in, and in fairness, and then you can come back. Okay, so what happens is the government does submit evidence about what is affordable. <clears throat> now, in this case, the pay review body came back and said, we're very interested, you know, fascinating to hear your argument, but actually, we are going to make a settlement which is more than the government said was affordable. So now the government could turn around and say, well, look, we still can't afford it, but the government in this case said, okay, we will accept it every last penny that the independent pay review body asks for. And the point is this, who is suggesting, is anyone here suggesting we should get rid of the independent no, pay review body? No, you're missing the point. No, but if you're you not, accept no, it... 14 health unions have said they're not going to cooperate but with independent pay review. So but, yes, but they are. This is ah, a phony but, but the question argument. is, are the politicians saying... Of course, argument. sorry, I've said my because because It's a legal because challenge. Because if ministers spent a little bit more time seeking to try and find a way through it and to get a settlement rather than engaging in this kind of distraction activity around legislation, then we'd be in a much stronger position where it comes to the NHS and our schools. Alex. Well, I respectfully but fundamentally disagree. So it's not just uh, you know, the British government saying that this is a reasonable thing to do. The International Labour Organization says it's a reasonable thing to do. And as has been indicated, this is something that applies in France, in Italy, in yeah. Spain. Now, but when you, when you mention if, the International Labour Organization, they, they say... As you're, you're right, because I looked into this because this was something that, that the Prime Minister yeah. mentioned yesterday. Mm. Uh, but they say minimum service levels are, uh, you know, a proportionate way of yeah. balancing the right to strike, but only to cover safety of individuals yeah. and their health. Yeah. So that would not include a lot of things that government is suggesting, such as education, for example. Well, I mean, let me I just, just think if you're going to quote them, you might as well quote the whole yeah, thing. Yeah, no, no, that's, abs that's, abs no, that's absolutely right. But what I, what I wanted to say is that we already have in our country, there are certain sectors that can't strike. So the police is a, an obvious one. But if you go to other countries, namely the United States and Canada, if you work in the health sector, you can't strike at all. Now, we're not saying you can't strike at all, because the, as the point the gentleman was making, of course, you have to be able to strike that balance. However, when it comes to issue of life and limb, if you or someone you love, you know, your, your friend, your mother, your sister, if you don't know that someone will come when there's literally a risk to life, I don't that's think that's the right balance. That's but a I don't think, day at the well, moment. But the, the, the we, NHS... Well, we can talk about the plan on these specifics, but I'm, but I'm just saying that we where, have where to we... get to a point where, people, where there's a risk of life and limb that, pe that people should be able to... And can I just make this well, one last point? Last, last point? Just just still, you will have seen paramedics... You will have seen people leaving picket can, lines during exactly, strikes to respond exactly. to precisely those Absolutely. calls. Absolutely, but can I deal with that specific point? So one of the things that was very responsible, if I, again, may respectfully say so, is the nursing union said in advance, this is what we will provide along the lines that you indicated. But there were other sectors which did and so you had a perverse situation where literally two minutes to midnight, not metaphorically, literally, 
The Secretary of State was finding out what ambulance cover was going to be provided the following day. So all this is saying is that we should be able to know in advance. So you haven't got regional discrepancies where an ambulance will come in these circumstances in the northwest, but not in the southeast. But so that you can see transparently and in advance okay. what but, are those minimum levels. It's not, it's not just about health, nurse, of the course. The nurse has said, and, and, ahead of Christmas, the nursing union said, if ministers sit down and talk yeah. to us about pay, we'll call off the strikes. Why didn't but they do this, it? That's, but that's a separate issue. We are it's absolutely not a separate ready. issue. It's, the fun, it's, no. the, it's at the heart of the it issue. Is, but, but the question in service. fairness, the question services. is, is, about, is yeah. the right to strike a basic right? And, and, and it's, it's not just about health. Yeah, sure. I need to keep bringing it back to that, but it's about, you know, I'm quoting the government here, border security, nuclear decommissioning, education. Well, he, Let, let's hear from some of our... That was very kind of... But <laughs> can I just say... In a minority, love Anna, 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 look, this is really, I backed Rishi Sunak, and I backed him because he said last summer that the greatest destroyer of all, not my words, by the way, Margaret Thatcher's words, was what? Inflation, the point that that gentleman up there was made. We cannot deliver all we want for the British people. You know, what Winston Churchill, you talked about conservatives, he called the treasure in the heart of every man, unless you get on top of inflation. And if we don't address this, mm. if we don't do inflation, if we don't grow the economy, if we don't get on top of debt, then you will not have the great public service of the future. Final, very briefly, right, there, we're in Birmingham, there will be a child born today in this great city that in 25 years' time, through no fault of her own, will knock on the door of the state and say, do you know what, I need some support. I've been booted out of my house by an abusive boyfriend or whatever. It will be no answer to her to say, do you know what, the cupboard is bare because the last generation didn't get on top no, of inflation the and didn't right, okay. so this, we, so the has pri this prime two of minister, the worst prime ministers so this minister prime minister this country has ever seen. will get on top of these issues and, and, you, and, forget, and Alex, you forget we have not no, I don't think it is um, but the royal family stay out, stay out of politics and I think it's right that politicians don't okay. involve themselves in the private family matters of the royal family. I think it's terribly yeah. sad what's happened but I, I don't think it's really for politicians to, um, to involve ourselves in, in any big way in that yeah. uh, decision. I, damaging the monarchy. No, it's not. And I think the, the only thing I would add, because Bridget's absolutely right, politicians don't, uh, don't get involved. The only thing, as we were talking about Queen Elizabeth II, I remember when she went um, to Ireland, that famous trip in 2011, and she was talking, of course, about reconciliation. And she, made the, she gave this expression, which just occurred to me now, really resonated with me, where she said that if you want to reconcile, it's incumbent on everyone to think about how they might have done things differently or not at all. And it was a very, very powerful expression. And I, I just hope that relations do improve over time, because I think they've all made a contribution to their country. And f families are difficult. Of course they're difficult. But I think in the interests of that family, in the interests of the country, I, I do hope they reconcile. Alex, what, are we all, is all done, the idea is for everyone to do A level, or no, absolutely what, not. What is it then? No, and of course it's not for everyone to do A level. And that, uh, no, what, what um, the prime minister is saying, and he's absolutely right, is that as you compare, no, he is. Look, he's absolutely right. If you, you compare, have to be quite brief. I've only got no, three right, minutes right, left. So, so so you, okay, but if you compare this country to um, peer nations, uh, typically they do tend to uh, do maths till later. Now, of course, not everyone is going to do A level. That's right. But when it comes to financial education, so that people can be more empowered when they're dealing with issues of credit or more mortgages or rent or compounding. These sorts of principles are things that are going to assist our young people. Final point, of course, we are in a global competition. We're in a global competition with nations like uh, India, like China. Over half of the world's economy is now in the Eastern Hemisphere. We've got to ensure that this country is match fit to okay. win the jobs of tomorrow. And, to that, and maths is important to that. We'll have to be quite brief, Bridget.